So uh, the last three classes, I I, I talk about um, when rook and one pawn versus rook, rook and two pawns versus rook, and when both sides have pass pawns. So in the class today, I am going to show you different exercises. So many many different type of group end games where you will have to combine everything you've learned um, in the previous classes and something that will become uh, should become very familiar with you guys is the technique of um, just one uh, triangulation to pass the move to your opponent sometimes stalemate so today you guys will see all of that and the point of today is to train you guys to be familiar with this um, technique and to always be alert and look for them in this type of positions. So our first example today is this position. This is from the game Ivanchuk and Anan in the Super Tournament Linares in 2009. 2009. Um, it is white to move. How would you win this position for white? Please answer my question uh, by chatting with me directly. You can also ask me anything. So let me show you what happened in this game. Uh, this game actually, Ivan should play a perfect game. He was much better for most of the game and at this point, he almost had to win in his in his pocket. So, but still, it wasn't that easy because here in the game he played this move, king d6, which looks logical, trying to maybe bring a king there. But after this, and I'm playing king h6, and then there's always the main trick is that. Um, Like if white play a7 here, then rook a3, rook b7, and take, take, and this is stalemate. So that's the whole idea of black to defend this, black stalemate himself. So obviously white cannot easily advance this a pawn. That's, that's the only trick black has. But at the same time, if the pawn is still on a6, there is no stalemate. And black has to cut off the white king on the c5, otherwise, the king will go there and play a7. So the reason why king d6 was a mistake was because then white couldn't get the king there in time and black could always try to, uh, when the king gets close, then check, check, and then you get this part and this is a draw, yeah. So I'll just show you guys the rest of the game. It's pretty easy draw from there for black. But let's come back to the first position. So king d6 is not right. Rook b7 also doesn't win because after king h6, a7, rook a3, and let's move black is going to take on a7. It's a stalemate. So how do you win that for white? Just checking, you guys can hear me and see the ball clearly, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, so if we use elimination method, it's, it's probably easy to see the first move that we have to offer the tray of the rook so the king can get close 
Also, by the way, after King D6, Black could also make a draw with Rook C4. So same idea, just attack here. If A7, Rook A4, and then take the pawn. Maybe, maybe even Chuk was carrying on something like A7 here, um, and then Rook A4, Rook B7, King H6. Maybe he was thinking about some King E7. But I don't think that changed anything because black can just go back here and then just waiting on g7 and h6. So anyway, the first move, rook c6 is correct, but it's not that simple. It's not over after rook c6. So let's say black goes rook g3. What do you guys play now? If rook c4, then rook a3, it's, then you have to repeat rook c6. A7 also is not right because of the same re reason, rook A3, and then rook will take on A7. So you have to bring the king to support the pawn, starting first with king C5. Rook takes g4. So after this, black no longer has the stalemate tricks, but black is trying to sack the rook for the pawn and quickly advance this pawn. So what do we do now? If a7 is not good here, because after rook a4, king b6, g4, this is already a draw. And yeah, some of you may think why it has rook c4, but actually this is a fortress. This is a um, black rook can just stay here, f5 and h5, and this is a draw. So any move like rook f4 here, then followed by rook f5, and the rook just stay here. But instead of a7, why should play King b5, taking away the a4 square and threatening a7 now. So black has to retreat for the rook uh, to, to the 8th rank. Because if rook g1, then white can play a7. Now if rook a1, there's rook a6. So black has to give a check here. And it's, it's the same. Uh, same type of position here. Same threat, rook a6, so black has to take, take. And this is similar to the main line, which you will see here in a moment. So after rook f4, a7, rook has to go back, f8, rook a6. So very typical in rook endgame when both sides have fast pawns, you have to calculate the exact move to make sure that when you, after you capture the opponent's rook, you can come back and stop the opponent's fast pawn. So in this case, black has to start first with rook a8 in order to um, draw white's king further away. So king c6, king f6, king b7, and again, rook should move, not taking the pawn immediately, but move to f8 or g8 or h8. It's the same thing. So a8, take. And now it's very important to take with the rook. So remember, you always want to keep your king as close to your opponent's pass pawn as possible. The rook is a very, uh, it's a long range piece. It's, it moves much faster than the king. So you can take with the rook and the rook can move back anytime. 
But if you take with the king, then it's going to take one more move to come back. So always keep the king close. And this position is just enough for white to win. So, but uh, after g4, there's only one move to win here. So tell me, what could you play for white? King c6 would be a mistake because after king g5, king b5, g3, king e4, this could normally win without the g6 pawn, but because now black has this pawn, white cannot check from behind. So this is this is a draw now. So after g4, white has to play rook a5, cutting off the black king on the fifth rank. If rook a3, it, it doesn't really stop the pawn because black black king will just uh, go forward to support it. So let's say you go rook a3, black will go king g5, and then king c6, king f4, and white cannot win this. So rook a5 is the only way to cut, cut off the king. And of course the idea is now if g3, then we go back rook a3 and we get the pawn. So black has to play g5 here, and now we move the king back, move the king back, and now again only move to win here, rook a2. So white is trying to win every single tempo possible, so just in time to stop the king from getting to f3. And now it should be an easy win with rook a Seven, a rook a8, g2, and this small trick with king f3 cannot promote the queen. So this is another instructive um, example. Without the g5 pawn, it would be a draw here because when you play rook g8, that always has king. Uh, sorry, no, 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 sorry. Uh, king h1, king f2 is still a win for white. But uh, yeah, here with, with this g pawn, it's even easier to win because there's no king h1 here, and white is just winning here easily. So first move, yeah, rook c6, and then as you as you saw, white still had to follow up with very strong move like king c5, king b5, not king b6, but king b5, and then yeah, then win this and just in time. So like rook. This rook a5 and rook a2 had to be calculated in advance. So I would say it's not easy to see that this is a winning move. Probably that's why Ivan Chuk misplay it. But if you have a lot of time in endgame, at this point you have to calculate, be very true when you when you before you play rook c6, you have to see all of that. Because it's just a matter of one tempo. If if black had one more tempo, he could be able to make a draw. So, yeah, this is, I think, it's a very difficult position 